Places and skirting highlands was a vicissitudinous engineering feat. Even now, its passenger trains have special facilities and medics in attendance to ensure riders are acclimated to the high altitude. Doctors warn that this railroad is not for everyone. The bitterly cold weather was once the nemesis of the Qinghai Tibet Railway's construction. Nowadays, the enchanting snow-capped mountains flanking the tracks are a prime attraction for tourists. Heading out of Hoxil to the Tuo River, the source of the Changjiang. Then turning southwards 200 kilometers, we arrive at the highest point of the railroad, the Tangula Mountains, more than 5,000 meters above sea level. This is frozen earth territory with perennially sub-zero temperatures. With the lofty terrain and icy weather, you can easily suffer the effects of high altitude. The Qinghai Tibet railway trains are fitted with air taps to supply oxygen to passengers in need. A doctor and a nurse are on duty around the clock to treat those feeling unwell. Special equipment is also installed inside the carriages. At the head of each bed is installed breathing apparatus providing oxygen. The high altitude which plagued railroad workers now affect train passengers. But experts say not to worry. It's like mounting a flight of stairs. It's relatively safe. You go from Golmud at 2,800 meters, pass elevations of 3,000, 4,000 meters, and arrive at Lhasa at 3,600 meters. It's relatively high, but safe. The Qinghai Tibet Railway runs mainly in the daytime, so passengers can enjoy the scenic route, traveling at a speed of 120 kilometers an hour. At the few stops en route, passengers may alight for more sightseeing. The train has a restaurant where passengers can satiate their palates while feasting their eyes on the vista. There are other facilities in the carriages to regale the senses. We have installed LCD monitors so everyone can watch TV programs to relieve the fatigue of the journey. Why do we have this microphone? Soon we may be able to connect the microphone to the internet and this earphone can be plugged into a laptop computer. After synchronizing, we can chat on the internet and do hotmail and email too. The world's highest railway not only carves a passage through the highlands, it also opens the door to tourism in Tibet. Final destination, Tibet's provincial capital, Lhasa. Tibet is the birthplace of Tibetan Buddhism. The Potala Palace is the former residence of the Dalai Lamas, the sanctuary of Tibetan Buddhism and Tibet's political and religious center. Almost every day, followers kneel in worship. Tibetan Buddhism is one form of Buddhism. It was introduced to Tibet during the Tang Dynasty. Some people call it Mizong or secret religion. Tibetans are religious people. The turning of their prayer wheels signifies continuous prayer. The magnificent architecture, rich religious traditions and unique national characteristics have always lured tourists from all over the world to Tibet. In their religion, faith is vital. I'm deeply impressed with Lhasa. I feel Lhasa is not like any big city in China. 
佢個建築啦係藏。It has Tibet style architecture and the language spoken is Tibetan。就藏文啦。Wang Chenggong runs a travel agency in Hong Kong. He visited Tibet before the construction of the Qinghai Tibet Railway. He plans to organize tours to Tibet on the new railroad. Wang claims to have 40% more clients wanting to visit Tibet, but he thinks Lhasa is not ready to accommodate large numbers of visitors. Lhasa has no five-star hotel. It only has two four-star hotels, which are better and bigger. But they may not be able to cope with many tourists at the same time. Problems will arise with reception, restaurants and tour coaches. Tibet has much to offer tourists, but not enough facilities to accommodate the expected surge in numbers brought by the new railway. Actually, Tibet has long been a remote backwater due to historical and geographical factors. Even though China's economy is booming, Tibet's infrastructure lags behind. Among all the provincial administrative regions on the mainland, Tibet was the only one without a railroad. 85% of her goods have had to be transported by road. Many believe the new railway, linking Tibet with the rest of China and the world, will enhance the province's economic development. Transportation enriches places. I think the impact of the Qinghai Tibet Railway will mainly be on tourism and transportation. The vast Qinghai Tibetan Plateau contains rich mineral resources. The output of copper, zinc, and silvite ranks first in China. In the past, transportation posed the biggest hurdle to development. Mining and heavy industries hope the Qingjiang Railway will bring business opportunities and economic development. The railway is part of China's strategy to develop the western part of the country. A vital way is to improve the basic infrastructure. And with a more prosperous west, the whole nation's development would be more balanced. For backward provinces such as Qinghai and Tibet, the new railway is seen as a critical point in their advancement. While hoping for economic development, some people are also worried the influx of tourists and alien habits would obliterate the unique characteristics of Tibet's culture and religion. I feel it's no longer authentic. For instance, this place used to be very quiet. A sudden influx of visitors would be very noisy and busy, greatly affecting local culture, making it like the Hans. Just how great an impact on Tibetan culture awaits to be seen, but Tibetans themselves are at loggerheads. Convenient transportation will be good for business, making everything easier. Those who oppose this are the elderly, because it's the economy of the Hans, and they'll take away everything, sell off everything, like letting the Han people take all of Lhasa's money. They think like that, but our generation of young people don't think or talk like that. The launch of the Qingdang Railway narrows distances between Tibet and the outside world. Tibet is no longer the only Chinese autonomous region without a railroad. Many spots in Tibet have retained their pristine conditions. Although the railway is expected to stimulate development, there's very real concern that it will also wreak havoc 
to local ecology and culture. Well, thank you for joining us. Until next week, from the Pearl Report team, good night and have a great week. And we'd just like to inform our viewers that you can catch this edition of the Pearl Report again on Tuesday night at 1.10am.